So Andre, thank you very much indeed for joining us to talk about the topic of the hospitality industry evolution. Thank you, Mr. Green. Very uh, glad to be here. So what do you think are some of the most important ways that the hospitality industry is evolving right now? Well, it's an inter interesting topic because hospitality industry is under evolution at all times. And uh, for me, some of the most interesting trends right now, if you're talking hospitality industry, is probably the leisure travel travelers. So people who are traveling for leisure and business at the same time. I mean, you take into account the recent pandemic, for example, and people they go to travel and to the hotels and they really, really appreciate when you have like co-working spaces, for example. You know, I mean, one nice concept is Zoku Hotels. It's kind of thriving right now. It's a small co-working space, co-living. Some consider it co-living, but you really have separate rooms. Uh, they're in Amsterdam, they're in France as well. And actually, that's one of the concepts we were thinking for our project for hotel development. Another very interesting thing is uh, technology. Of course, I mean, starting from keyless rooms, from, you know, uh, no person check-in, kind of. And uh, I went on a, four, no, it was ritz Carlton Moscow website the other day, and the first thing that greeted me was a chatbot. So you think technology that gets to the ritz Carlton, which is, you know, the pioneer of hospitality, one of the pioneers of the hospitality industry. It's quite interesting how it's evolving. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, for me, the most interesting. So let's sort of narrow the focus onto uh, the world of luxury hospitality in particular. Um, what do you think are some of the really interesting trends in that segment at the moment? Luxury hospitality. Uh, luxury, well, define luxury first, because, you know, everyone has a diff different definition to luxury. If I think of luxury, I quite like a saying by Cesare Pavese, an Italian author, wrote in the 1940s, 1930s. He says that everything, every luxury must be paid for and everything is a luxury, starting with your own life. So, you know, for some, luxury might be a different definition. And luxury, well, personally, my, my definition of luxury would be something is, it's something that does not depend on income. And it's something, it's just preferring the finer things to, to the best value, the best of your ability in terms of monetary terms, and that's luxury for me. And from that, there's an interesting trend, actually. So there's, right now, the luxury spenders are Gen Zs and Millennials, the interesting fact is that Gen Zs and Millennials uh, is that Gen Zs actually started to spend five years before the Millennials did on luxury products. So from that comes the fact that I mean, our generation, you know, the, the, the biggest spenders in terms of luxury and um, luxury is now not dependent on your income. So it could be interesting for luxury brands to actually explore the kind of everyday need uh, products in that kind of sense. You've talked about some of the changes that are occurring. But what would you narrow down as some of the biggest drivers of change, whether that is demographics, whether it's technology? What, what, do, you, what do you think is the, are the kind of key drivers of change? Well, I think first is the demographic. You have the Gen Z and millennials. We are the future generations. We are the spenders. You know, we are uh, we're evolving constantly with the future in a way of hospitality as well. Uh, technology, 100%. Uh, if you link it to demographic of Gen Z and millennials as well, we are born. Some people have learned how to use it. Some people are born into it. We're more born into it. So we expect technology to be a part of, well, any service that we uh, we go to, just because of convenience or any other reasons. You know, we don't. Sometimes some people don't let their phone out their hands. I think uh, those are the key ones. Then also, if you look at the pandemic, for example, as well. So people are now more concerned. If you're talking pleasure travels, then more concerned about their health. And the pandemic just really showed people to put an accent on their health and, you know, their well-being. And so I think those are the drivers. So we talked a bit about the external factors and, and looking outside in from the, from the, from the consumers. But what, are, what does all this mean for young people, for young talents who are now looking to forge their careers in the hospitality of the future? Well, I think now in terms of hospitality industry, uh, there are more opportunities than ever. I like to say that hospitality is everywhere. It's not only hotels and restaurants, it's anywhere where you involve a service, a human to human contact, you know, an interaction, a conversation. I think that's all of that is hospitality, where a client, uh, it's a consumer, business to consumer, business to business, and there can be hospitality everywhere. And what's interesting right now, actually, if you're talking sustainability wise, if you look at the biggest industries like oil, for example, you know, that makes money, and investors now, there's a trend that they realize that oil is not always going to be there. It's a finite resource, whereas people will always want to travel. People will always travel. People will always want to go to places. People will also want to have that experience of, you know, going to another place, experience the culture, experience, uh, I mean, whatever there is in that place. 
and they invest a lot into the hospitality industry. So there are a lot more opportunities now opening up, and it's not only um, not only within the hotels and restaurants sector, but also within the banking sector. There's hospitality um, segments opening up. Segments, sorry, the departments opening up within the banking industry. There's, um, I mean luxury car rental, luxury boats, luxury you know, aviation, all of this kind of thing. It's going to be new trends in terms of jobs opportun job opportunities, new jobs going to arise that we have never seen before. And um, I mean, now I think it's the better time than ever. So we've talked a lot about change and evolution and development and all the things that we think might change and some of the factors behind those. But for you, what do you feel are some of the fundamentals of, of hospitality that will, that, will be, that will always stay the same, will be perennial, basically? Well, despite the whole technological evolution and all the user technology and the fact that we, uh, you know, we adopt it and some people learn, some people are born into it, it doesn't matter. But I think in hospitality, one of the key elements is human interaction. It will always be there. Um, no matter where you go, there's, there may be a divide where you have some hotels completely automated, robotic, and some people like that. But when you experience the hospitality, I think the human interaction will always 100% stay the same in that sense. Uh, if we talk about technology, once again, there's, once we adopt the technology into the hospitality industry, once it becomes a new normal of uh, you know, existing within the hospitality, I think that's, we'll, that will stay the same, that will stay for a long time until it evolves to something else, but the I mean, technology is evolving every day. And the recent trend of sustainability as well, I think. So sustainability, a lot of hotels are trying to become green, a lot of businesses adopting you know, the green, green scales of every country because we are the future of the planet. If we look after it, it will you know, remain. So I think those are the fundamentals that will never change. Excellent, Andre. Thank you very much indeed for your thoughts and insights. Thank you, Mr. Green.